you know, I, I heard a talk on, on Bitcoin given by the person who's known as Patient Zero in the Bitcoin world, Wences Casares. He asked me, any, anybody own Bitcoin? No, nobody in the audience owned it, except for him. And did anybody know what it was? And a, a few scattered hands went up. And he said, well, let me explain to you um, why I own Bitcoin. And he said, and it's because I, I understand why you wouldn't understand it because you all live in America and you have a rule of law and you have uh, you know, orderly governments. And in most, in most times you have you know, low, relatively low inflation and a prosperous economy. And he said, but I'm from Argentina and my family's been there 150 years. And we've been wiped out four separate times by the Argentinian government seizing our assets, nationalizing the banks, inflating us out with hyperinflation. And he said, so Bitcoin can't be touched by the government. It's, an, it's a peer-to-peer, -peer decentralized, independent network. It's a ledger that records every transaction that's public. It's immutable. And he said, so the government, if you have Bitcoin, the government cannot take it away from you. He laid out what it, what it could do if it worked. He, he said then that it was very risky because then it was about $200. But I, I bought some then and I bought a little bit more over time and it became $500 and then I stopped buying it. And I didn't buy it for years until just the spring of this year. It hit a $66,000 high price. And then in four weeks, it was in half. Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Zane and that was Bill Miller telling the entire world that he bought Bitcoin when Bitcoin was $250 and he bought some additional Bitcoin when Bitcoin was $500 and he stopped buying Bitcoin for a few years until now when Bitcoin hit 60k recently he started buying Bitcoin once again that's quite interesting he's saying this to the entire world he's a very famous investor of course so this is going to send a huge impact around the entire world whenever rich people especially billionaires or millionaires or even great investors they invest in Bitcoin well it does a lot of positive things for Bitcoin. It sends the price throughout the roof. If Apple CEO Tim Cook is doing this, if so many rich people and great leaders and great investors are doing this, clearly there must be a good reason for Bitcoin. There must be a good reason why all of these people choose to invest in Bitcoin. What I like most about what Bill Miller just said was that if you have Bitcoin, cannot seize your money. They can't take it away unless they have your private key, unless they have your password. Essentially, it's a safety net for you and your and your finance and your and your funds and your money. It's a safety net for the first time in history. The governments, they cannot control your money and it feels good. So a lot of people who actually say Bitcoin does not have an intrinsic value. Well, I've got to say that you're incorrect. Bitcoin does have an intrinsic value. The intrinsic value is it's a monetary system that cannot be controlled by manipulative governments. And the governments can be extremely manipulated. Most governments are. So we need a way to mitigate this problem. We need a way to fix this problem. And the fixer is Bitcoin. It gives us a solution. It's a public blockchain. No new coins can be minted. No one can actually control the blockchain. No one can actually tell you what to do with your Bitcoin. It's up to you. Essentially, if you own Bitcoin, you are your own bank. If I were you, I would definitely check out the full video on YouTube because it's extremely educational. It's very insightful and I think you can learn a lot from it. There was a flash crash quite recently within Bitcoin. It actually went to 39.8 grand, $39,816. That's incredible. There was a quick flash crash. What's interesting is that it's back up above 42,000 US dollars. This is roughly around 31 grand in Great British Pounds. Market cap for Bitcoin right now is 800 billion. Keep that in account. But you see, because Bitcoin is a, is a public ledger, you don't actually need anyone's permission to buy Bitcoin. This allows countries like El Salvador to buy Bitcoin and keep it as their reserve currency. It's the most genius thing I've ever seen a country done in the last few years is buying Bitcoin to keep it as a reserve currency. It's the best reserve currency, a reserve currency that no one can control. You can't mint new coins. Anyway, let's take a quick look at the crashes that have happened in Bitcoin history in the last year. Well, in the, la well, in the last couple of years, I'd say from March 2020, this was when the big crash happened, perhaps one of the biggest crash we'll ever see in Bitcoin history. 
we don't know how long it's going to take for us to see another another big crash like March 2020. Now, summer last year, summer 2021, there was also a crash. And this was around May and June and July. There was also a crash within the Bitcoin ecosystem. So these are basically patterns in the last couple of years of crashes. The important thing is that after each crash, the price not just goes back up, but it goes back up much further than it's ever been throughout history. So whenever there's a Bitcoin crash, it's actually a good thing. It's actually a sign of what's to come. It's actually a sign that actually Bitcoin is going to go through the roof in the next few months, in the next year. And there's proof to support this, obviously, because if you take a look after 2017 and early 2018, you can see for yourself that Bitcoin had a, had a crash. It had a crash after its huge bull run, the first proper bull run. It had a huge crash. This was majority all throughout 2018. It tried to pick itself back up in the latter parts of 2019, but it didn't got too far. And for a lot of these times throughout history, between 2018 and 2019, a lot of people gave up on Bitcoin. Quite silly, actually. But a lot of those people, those same people are FOMOing back into Bitcoin, which is just really hysterical. Now let's take a look at 2021. Earlier in 2021, when Bitcoin had 60, 63 grand for the first time, after that, it had a huge crash in the market. And that was obviously in May and June and July. And that was last year. But once again, like I said, a crash in Bitcoin is actually a good thing because Bitcoin went even further and fly past 66 grand. Absolutely incredible. It just goes to prove that you should not be underestimating Bitcoin by any extent because after a crash, it usually recovers, but it recovers better than you can ever expect. Now, billionaire investor Bill Miller now has 50% of his personal wealth in Bitcoin. What time do we live in? What age? Honestly, seriously. Miller, who gained fame from beating the S&P 500 for a record break in 15 years in a row from 1991 to 2005 as a fund manager at Leg Mason, has previously invested heavily in Bitcoin, but his revolution about his personal portfolio was new. This is indeed new. Miller said he personally started buying Bitcoin at around $200 in 2014 after hearing a talk by Winsor Casares, known as the patient zero of Bitcoin for introducing it to Silicon Valley Circle at the annual Sun Valley Media and Tech Conferences. And obviously that's a clip that we were looking at in the start of the video and it was quite educational. It was really interesting. Now Miller started buying again at 30 grand, down from its high of just 69 grand. He obviously knew that the coin went to 69 grand. You don't buy Bitcoin in 2014, wait until it hits 69 grand and then buy again. No, you wait to see how far it can get and then wait for the price to fall back down. Wait until there's a discount, wait for the dip. This guy's one of the greatest investors of all time. He knows what he's doing and he's proven that he knows exactly what he's doing. 30 grand for one Bitcoin is actually an extremely good deal right now. And he knew exactly what he was doing. He planned for it. He predicted it. Now, despite his own heavily concentrated position, Miller advised for average investors to put 1% of their network in Bitcoin. Reasoning that if you put 1% of your portfolio in it for diversification, even if it goes to zero, which I think is highly improbable, but of course possible, you can always afford to lose 1%. And that's so true. But once again, this is not financial advice. This is just public information. Now, in additional news, five NFT marketplaces that could topple OpenSea in 2022. OpenSea was the big marketplace for NFTs in 2021. Now, Coinbase is actually working on their own NFT site, which is going to be really exciting because I do hope that Coinbase allows us to mint tokens because I do hope that Coinbase allows us to mint our NFTs in Polygon, not just Ethereum. And hopefully they'll allow us to mint our NFTs in other tokens such as Tezos or even cheaper tokens. So Rarible is definitely on the rise. There's FTX, there's FTX NFTs. I've actually never checked out FTX NFTs before. This is what FTX NFTs looks like. This is what the site looks like. 
Now surprisingly, I didn't see any sites on this list that I was expecting, such as Foundation. We did get Rarible, which is good, but there's a lot of other NFT sites as well that were not added to this list. So maybe those sites are not as big as I thought they were. Obviously, they're probably big in the crypto community, but to the wider crypto community, to the wider NFT crypto community, it's probably not as big as I thought it was. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Here's a question for you. Do you think the Bitcoin crash is over? Do you think that the market crash is over? It's an important question because if you look at the last three months, it definitely doesn't seem like it's over. It certainly doesn't seem like it's over. Looking at the last seven days, what's happening now is a lot of consolidation. There's a lot of consolidation. And obviously, because of the flash crash that happened recently, it means that we found a new bottom. And the new bottom is that Bitcoin has officially gone below 40 grand. It has. It's gone below 40 grand. And the last time it's done that, well, that's that's a really long time ago. The last time Bitcoin was under 40,000 US dollars or even under 30,000 US dollars was July last year, the 20th of July. That's almost six months ago. That's incredible. Confidence in Bitcoin has never been higher, to be honest. Despite the crash in the market, confidence has been confidence in Bitcoin is still at an extreme high, which is good. That's the way we want to keep it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to see more. And I will see you in my next video. And thank you for watching till the end. I really appreciate that.